Hi everyone. Tonight's video is on transport across membranes. And this video is going to specifically talk about the process of diffusion. So there are four processes to get substances across membranes. The first is diffusion, which we'll cover tonight. Then there's also facilitated diffusion. These are both passive forms of transport. They do not require energy. There's also active transport, and endo and exocytosis. These both require energy. But again, tonight's video is just going to focus on diffusion. So diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, resulting in an even distribution of molecules. And that's pictured here. So if we dropped some purple dye into this water, Initially, it starts out in a very high concentration where it was dropped into the water, and it slowly starts to spread out until there's an even concentration of dye throughout this entire beaker of water. If we looked at this from a molecule point of view, the purple dye would start it out as the molecules being all close together, and slowly they would spread out until we have an even distribution. This even distribution is called an equilibrium. Diffusion requires no energy at all. It's a passive form of transport. So what about diffusion of particles or substances through or across a membrane? Well, it still doesn't require energy. It's still going to be the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration towards an area of low concentration until there is an even distribution. But it does require a couple of things. It requires that the membrane that the molecule is passing through is permeable to that substance, and it requires what we call a concentration gradient. So I'm gonna talk about each of these two requirements separately. First, let's talk about membrane permeability. So you should remember from the membrane video that membranes are phospholipid bilayers with embedded proteins as pictured here. So what substances are membrane permeable? In other words, what substances can just cross straight through a membrane? Well, that's either very small molecules or nonpolar, hydrophobic molecules. These red dots here indicate our fat-soluble or hydrophobic molecules. They can just pass right through this lipid bilayer. And that's because the majority of this lipid bilayer, especially in the middle, is composed of these fatty acid tails. And it's a very hydrophobic environment. So these fat soluble or hydrophobic molecules can simply dissolve through the membrane and get from one side to the other. Examples of these include oxygen, carbon dioxide, and steroid hormones. Water-soluble molecules have to use a protein embedded in the phospholipid bilayer in order to cross because they can't get through this layer of fatty acids because they're water-soluble, they're not lipid-soluble. So the second requirement for diffusion to happen across a membrane, in addition to being the substance being able to be permeable to the membrane, is a concentration gradient. So what is a concentration gradient? A concentration gradient is when there is a high concentration of substances or molecules in one location and a low concentration in another. We can look at this as across a membrane, or we can also even just look at it in the original diagram I showed you of the purple dye diffusing. When this process first started, there was a high concentration of purple dye right here in the middle and a low concentration in the rest of the beaker. We would call this a concentration gradient because there is a distinct high and low concentration of purple dye. So I'm just showing those lines there. What are some important points for diffusion? Well, the driving force is the concentration gradient, not energy. So in this case, the reason that these red balls are going from this high concentration to the low is the fact that there is a high concentration here and a low concentration on this other side. Of course, this membrane must be permeable to the substance, even if there's a concentration gradient. So a high concentration of purple, of, I'm sorry, red dots here and a low concentration here. The red dots couldn't move if they're not soluble in the membrane. But the driving force, what's actually making this move, is the fact that it's very crowded with molecules here, and there's very few molecules here. This concentration gradient 
is what's making these molecules move from a high to a low concentration. Diffusion will continue until an equilibrium is reached. However, it's really important to note that even though in this diagram there is an equal distribution of red dots on one side as the other, the molecules will still move, but there will be no net movement from one side to the other. They'll move back and forth in an equal distribution so that that equilibrium is maintained. How fast does diffusion occur? Well, it depends on several factors. The first is, how big is the difference in the concentration gradient? So in the picture I have here, there are a lot of red dots on the left side and very few on the right side. We would call this a very high concentration gradient because there's a large difference in concentration on the left and the right. If you look at the diagram on the right, there is still a concentration gradient there are still more red dots in this left chamber than there are in the right, but it's not a very big concentration difference, or we wouldn't call it a very steep concentration gradient. There are definitely more on the left than the right. The flow of molecules will overall move from the left to the right, but they won't move as fast. There won't seem to be as urgent a need to reach an equilibrium because it's already closer to an equilibrium to start with. Another factor is the temperature. Because the higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy. So the higher rate of movement of the molecules. So molecules tend to move from high to low faster when it's a higher temperature. Also the distance between the area of high concentration and the area of low concentration can impact the rate of diffusion. So the shorter the distance the molecules have to move, they move faster. And that's pretty intuitive. The size of the molecule also impacts the rate of diffusion. Smaller molecules diffuse much faster than large. If we look at our beaker here with a membrane separating these two chambers, on the left-hand side we have a lot of red dots, and on the right we have none. So we have a high concentration gradient. And an equilibrium will eventually be produced based on the fact that there is a concentration gradient driving the diffusion. But the small dots are going to move much faster than the large dots, and so an equilibrium of small dots will be reached faster than an equilibrium of large dots. The last thing that impacts the rate of diffusion is the surface area of the membrane in between the high and the low concentration. The more surface area, the higher rate of diffusion. Let's look at this. These red dots are able to get from the high concentration to the low concentration by going through the membrane. And if there's more membrane, there's more places to get through. You can think of it as more doorways. So the more membrane there is, the more doorways there are. So the faster the dots can get from the high concentration to the low. So what you should know from tonight, you should definitely know the definition of diffusion. You should know the definition of a concentration gradient. You should know that diffusion is a passive form of transport. It does not require energy, but it does require a concentration gradient, and it will continue until equilibrium is reached. You should also know what conditions increase or decrease the rate of diffusion. Not listed on here, but another thing you should know is what molecules are able to freely diffuse across a membrane. And again, that would be our small and nonpolar member of uh, proteins or molecules. So that's all for tonight.